All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the last day of our Spain uh, broadcasts here. So we've been traveling in Spain this week, which is a new thing for me because I haven't actually featured Spain before. And I haven't been to Spain, Jorge, since 1998. Can you believe that? Was that in your honeymoon? If I that was my it. honeymoon in 1998. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been way, way, way too long. So uh, I think I'm going to have to come back perhaps this summer. I'm, I'll come and visit you, Jorge. So uh, we you have again. You need to get back here. Yeah, you need to get back. We do. So again, we have Jorge Roman joining us today. He's been a colleague of mine for many years. What, at least 10 years, I think, right? We've worked together. Uh, yeah, at least yeah. 10 years, yeah. That's right. yeah. Uh, and so Jorge is based in Madrid and he is an expert on Spain, but Madrid is not the only thing that he does. He does tours all over the place. And with his, um, his own company traveling with Jorge, uh, he is now doing tours on his own, much like Adventures with Sarah started out as just a little thing that I was doing on my own. So Jorge is expanding as well. So uh, I highly recommend his tours. And today what we're going to do is have a look at uh, what he's pr proposing for Spain if you'd like to travel with him. Uh, and even if you're not, if you just want to be an armchair traveler, today you get to travel around Spain uh, and have an excellent guide to show you that. So shall we go? How do we say let's, let's go? I, I, vamonos, is that right? Vamonos. That's right. That's my word. Vamonos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so welcome, everybody, and thank you for taking your time to be here. I just want to thank as well my dear colleague here, Sarah. That thank you, Sarah, for your time and your dedication and your gratitude about doing this for uh, just promote my little corner of the world over here, which I'm so proud of. And uh, it's one of those uh, places in the traveling destination that, uh, they, yeah, it's there, might be in your list, but for some reason, it's not on the top of the list. But once you discover it, there is so many things to see around and so beautiful things regarding everything, history, heritage, uh, gastronomy, wine. That's what I'm <laughs> in it for, Jorge. I'm in it for the sangria and the churros and chocolate. And yeah, that's oh, yeah. I'm Among on many other things. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So uh, whenever you allow me, Sarah, I can start just uh, sharing yeah, screen. Go ahead and set up. Yeah, go ahead and share the screen. And I just want to let everybody know that um, I'm going to give the screen and uh, have Jorge kind of take take charge here. But I'm going to be on my um, my laptop with your comments. So if you have questions or comments, please go mm -hmm. ahead and put them into the, the comments on this post. And I'll be monitoring them. So if you have questions, I can ask them for you. Uh, By all you. means, it's going to be uh, the end is going to be a Q&A session. But uh, Sarah, please feel free to interrupt me anytime if uh, in the tours that free tours that I'm offering here. Uh, if there is any question regarding that tour, just please interrupt me and make me questions that you need to make. Okay. Very good. Okay. So you have the floor. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's see if technology works on my side. Here it is. Uh, can you see that, Sarah? Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so here we go. Let's try to see if technology works. Uh, which seems it's not working. So I need to get out of here for some reason. Wait a second. It's not working. Let me just repeat it again, which is this one. And now we are starting from here. Let's see. Here we are traveling with Jorge. That is the name of my little company. And uh, this is the name of my website, travelingwithjorge.wordpress.com. And uh, the three tours are offered in there. Okay, let's start for one of uh, that I have a little bit more of uh, my heart put on it because I'm from the south of Spain. I am from Malaga. Sound of uh, the sound of, of the place sounds like uh, southern Spain. Uh, that's almost in Africa. Well, you're kind of right because uh, the Iberian Peninsula was um, invaded by the Arabs for almost uh, 800 years. And in those 800 years, he left a very, very big imprint in, imprint in our genetics. So let's start. This is the flag of Andalusia. <laughs> and you see Hercules there with two lions, which is a symbol of power. Uh, and each, in each side, there is uh, two pillars of Hercules. Just imagine yourself that you are sailing from the Mediterranean towards the Atlantic. And what will you see in both sides of, uh, of your uh, skyline? You'll see the rock of Gibraltar in one side and the mountain Sidi Musa on the other side. That in the old um, Greek mythology was representing the pillars of, 
pillars of Hercules, the, the end of the world at the time. So, flag of Andalusia with a shield in the center. There you go. This is a geopolitical map of the area of the south of Spain, Andalusia. And as you see, there are several provinces. In fact, there are eight. And this is the land of the olive groves. There is an area in Andalusia in between the towns of Baeza and Linares. That, uh, by the way, both of them are World Heritage by the UNESCO. The 20% of the whole olive oil productions in the whole world is produced just in there. Spain has been the country in the whole world for the last few decades that is the largest producer of olive oil. Also, the land of the passion, flamenco. There you see this beautiful photo of a friend of mine that posed for me just that way in Sevilla. Anyway, let's continue. This is the uh, a satellite map of uh, the Iberian Peninsula, and this is the area that covers Andalusia. So it's a large extension. The size of Andalusia could be more or less the size of the state of Maine, just to give you an idea. And then again, back to this other map, this is what our staycation is going to be. Uh, geographically, and uh, uh, let me say, the whole of Spain is like two thirds of the state of uh, Texas. And you're gonna say, oh, it's not that big. For European standards, there is, it is, it is big. So what happens, these staycations, as I call my tours, uh, that by the way, it's gonna be a minimum of five and a maximum of 10 people, no larger than 10 people. Okay, so you have guaranteed two seats in, your bus. Uh, if there is five, of course, you're gonna have more than two seats, but the, the size of the bus is gonna be the same. That's where we're starting in Granada. And that's uh, where we're staying four nights. After those four nights, we're gonna go to Sevilla, but on the way, I cannot help taking you to my birthplace, which is Malaga. And going to Malaga, what we're going to do is instead of driving on the highway, we're gonna go just a day visit it, visit going, I mean, driving south from Granada and uh, drive parallel to the Costa del Sol, the Mediterranean. And then after that day visit in Sevilla, we're gonna go, sorry, that day visit in Malaga, we're gonna go to Sevilla where we are staying for five nights. Well, let's go on the arrival. And this is generic for the three tours. On the arrival day, obviously you have to checking, etc., etc., And we are having just like a little gathering just to get ourselves to uh, toast uh, with uh, a glass of wine or cava, why not? That's a famous sparkling wine that is famous all over. And uh, we're gonna go for a walk to the top of one of the three mountains of the city of Granada. In this uh, case is the uh, Albaicin viewpoint where you can see this beautiful view. Guess what it is? It's one of the palaces of the Alhambra. Uh, the Alhambra is a complex of palaces that we're going to visit the day after. But, uh, you know, day of arrival, checking in, a little rest, getting to, to, getting to know each other and walking up the hill to admire this uh, beautiful view. We are going to have a very well-deserved dinner with a spectacular view uh, overlooking the Alhambra palace, palaces. After that, we're gonna walk down the alleys. And this is one of the views that you will go, will see at night with all the lights. And this is just a portion of what you will see the day after. After this uh, walking down the hill, we're going to see some um, facades of the city of Granada at night. Look how glorious and beautiful it is. This is uh, the monument representative of Granada, which is uh, represents Christopher Columbus, the day we signed, they signed the agreements with the Catholic monarchs. In this case is Isabella, Isabel the Catholic monarch. Uh, you know, in that uh, agreement that they signed before uh, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue, because in those days, the Atlantic Ocean did not exist. It was the ocean blue. Anyway, then we deserve a well night's uh, sleep. There you are. And the day after is when to, well, we go there to the Alhambra, visiting many of the palaces and the jewel of the crown, which is the jewel of the crown, meaning the palace, the patio of the lions. That fountain is made entirely in marble. And you know, marble is a porous material. And with the years, it was very, very 
um, you know, uh, in bad conditions because of the water running for centuries. So it took like about eight years to restore that jewel, which is that beautiful fountain that you see over there. Then what more things to do in Granada is my personal paradise for tapas. On the way down from the Alhambra, we're gonna stop at the place and we're gonna have with our beer, some tapas in this case. Uh, tapas, uh, it could be, uh, you know, it's small portions of any kind of food, but in this case, uh, the one, the mussels that you see at the bottom of uh, just below the beer is what I had included for free with my beer. The other is what we call half a portion of mixed fried fish that had prawns, calamari rings, and uh, boccherones, which is like kind of a little sardines. And uh, it's, it's the paradise, it's the paradise for tapas. And something that I know you love, Sara, jamón serrano. <laughs> Granada is one of the lands in Spain of the jamón serrano. We'll talk about that later on. So what is the stage, the, the not the stage, the, the, the meaning of the staycations? We are staying in one location. Uh, in Andalusia, because of the geographical, uh, you know, uh, magnitude of the area, we're going to divide that in two staycations, in Granada and then in Sevilla. So that means that one day we dedicate it to Granada, and the day after we're going outside for a day trip. So the following day, we are going to the Albujarras. They have the name at the very top, Albujarras. That means in Arabic, the green land. From 711 until 1492, the Moors, the Arabic, the Muslims, they were dominating the Iberian Peninsula. So almost 800 years, as I mentioned before, left a huge imprint in our genetics, way of life, even a language. There is like about 7,000 words that they are from the Arabic language that we have adopted. And al Pujarras, that is what it means, the green land. Oh, sorry, I needed a glass of, of water. Let's continue with that. This is in one of the towns of the al Pujarras. Look at that uh, man over there just watering the plants. It's like times is stopped in there. The altitude of all that area is above 3,000, um, no, sorry, excuse me, excuse me, uh, 3,000 meters, which is 9,000 square feet. No, sorry, high in altitude, 3, 000, uh, 9,000 feet. So what happens with that? In summer, it's really hot, and in winter, it can be really, really cold. Look, this is the bread shop of that, of that town where I stayed. I wouldn't mind going twice or even three times a day to buy my bread, just for the breakfast, just for the lunch, and just for the dinner. How beautiful is all that? Then we are, you know, in these uh, towns, uh, this is the socializing places of the old days. This is the laundrette of the time. This is where the ladies in, 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 you know, in the old times, they used to go and wash their clothes because the water was running from outside of the rocks, from any rock, it was running. This is another view of the, let's say the laundrette that uh, used to be everything done by hand. So if you see the, where the fountain is supposed to be at the wall, the water was flowing from there. So in the first sink is where you used to soap all the water and the other sinks is where you used to just rinse them and make sure that they have no soap, soap left. This is an, a view from the outside, but then we continue and uh, here we see we go, this is just one of the streets of uh, any of those towns. Look at how beautiful. They are all whitewashed. Look at them. And here, there is a workshop that uh, they still make uh, rugs and uh, shirts and capes in the old style. This is uh, one place that is also included, depending on the availability of, uh, of their uh, businesses uh, that is included in one of my visits in, in this Essence of Southern Spain tour, and they will show us there. One of the things I want to uh, state very clear that in my tours, absolutely everything is included. 
you don't, I'm not taking you here to buy things. I'm just taking you here to experience and to see how they still manufacture things in the old style. So if you decide to buy anything, that is your problem. I don't want to know anything about it. Uh, all tips are included. Uh, you don't need to pay absolutely for anything. Just following with the walking around in town, just admiring, look at that blue sky and how everything is whitewashed. And this is a very peculiar street. This is called the street of the water. They have to canalize the water in the center of the street just to make it that way. And this is another point of view from below. And that is water just flowing out of the rock because of the mountains in there. Actually, there are a few spas in the areas because the minerals of that water, they make it for medicinal purposes and it's bottled and it's sold all over. Look at this funny photo of people, how they do decorate the entrances of their homes. This is an old fashioned sink that the lady of the home, uh, she was outside and I remember perfectly when I took that photo, I said to her, do you mind if I take a photo? Oh, not me, I'm not dressed well and my hair is a mess. I just, you know, I just take the whole, the, the, the entrance. So uh, the pot is there in the place where the, sink, the, where the sink should be, but you see the mirror. And that is the old style uh, hand wash basin that you used to have in the in the bedrooms at the time. And this gentleman here is uh, Enrique, my guide that is gonna be taking us uh, while we are in Granada. Uh, so there you see that, uh, you know, it's more than that. This is just another shot that I loved it, which are uh, veins, uh, grapes, uh, just hanging out from any portico or any entrance of any homes, just uh, hanging there and making a shade for the summer. And this is the place I was telling you earlier, uh, Sarah, the Serrano ham, uh, family ram business. Uh, they do dry the hams that way. Have a look at the windows on the right hand side. And if you pay uh, close attention to them, they are not uh, locked. They all they have is just a net. What is the purpose? The purpose for that? Well, the purpose is that there are windows in both sides of that room. So that means that the fresh air for the mountains just run across the room. The net is just to avoid the mosquitoes going in and the ham hocks, they are dried just with the fresh air, but not only the fresh air, there is another uh, procedure that they do and is what this gentleman, the owner of this uh, family run business is one by one, he makes an average of 300 a day. If you see at the bottom of the picture in that sink, that is extra virgin olive oil. So with a brush, which is uh, holding in his hand, he brushes the uh, ham hocks one by one, as I said, with extra virgin olive oil. And if you see that lump of white stuff just to the right of the ham hock, it is pork butter. So after the um, olive oil being brushed, they cover the whole ham hock with the uh, pork butter, and that's how they cure the hams. Okay, after that visit, we deserve a good meal, and alpujarras, plato, dish, alpujarreño, which is scrambled eggs over deep fried potatoes with red peppers that you see there. Also, there is a red pepper, blood sausage i'm not uh, keen on blood sausage but it's part of it it's optional you can eat if you want to then you have a chorizo there on the right hand side and you have a piece of cooked ham at the bottom of that very very caloric is carb free sarah you know it's uh, all this is totally carb free this <laughs> this dish <laughs> mm. okay let's continue with this and uh uh, once we are done with that day, uh, you just wander on your own in the city of Granada just to discover hidden places. And uh, if you want to hike up again to the hill of, uh, of that uh, neighborhood that we did the day before, you can find uh, beautiful corners just like the, with the sunset, just to admire again the, the Alhambra because it's, you know, a chance in a lifetime. And uh, then the day after, uh, with daylight, we can see again the symbol of Granada, Christopher Columbus and Isabella. And then we are going to visit in the Cathedral of Granada, which is this one over here, this section, which is the Royal Chapel. This is where uh, 
Isabel and Fernando, they are buried. And also her, their daughter, Juana the Crazy, and Philip the Handsome, her husband, and also the little baby that was supposed to be uh, getting the crown of uh, Castilla at the time, but it wasn't him. It was um, another uh, of the grandsons that it was Charles I from Spain and fifth of Germany. But that is another story that you will learn once we are there. All righty. After visiting the chapel, we're going to go to a local market where you can buy these delicacies over here, especially the shellfish and seafood, that you can have it cooked immediately after you buy them on the spot and socialize with your friends if you buy also some ham there you have and have uh, keep an eye on the tray the plastic tray at the bottom of the photo uh, that's how they sell them to take out or you can have it on a plate displayed and find one of those uh, tables with stalls and have a beer the way these people are doing or a glass of wine why not look at all these delicacies as i mentioned earlier uh, granada is my beautiful place for uh, tapas look at those sardines also the anchovies the tuna fish on the right hand side the pickles above the tuna fish is uh, the capers capers is big in granada you know capers in pickle sauce is absolutely beautiful anyway so once we finish in granada as i told you earlier we go to drive to the south and drive uh, parallel to the coast and we're going to go to granada which is my to malaga sorry which is my birthplace we're going to have a little stroll around in downtown this is the city hall Hall, what you see on the right hand side this is the lighthouse of Malaga a curiosity about this is the only lighthouse in Spain with a feminine name you know that in Spanish language there are genders he or she as you do in English but it's more specific in Spanish so this instead of be called the lighthouse that it could be el faro in Spanish is called la farola which is specifically feminine, is the only one in the whole country with a feminine name and is one of the icons of the city. By all means, the birthplace of Picasso. We're going to visit his museum. And after visiting his museum, you're going to have some free time to wander around and see how Malaga has become so beautiful within, within the last 20 years since the Picasso Museum has opened. This is the front facade of the cathedral, as you see in here. And also this is the back part of the cathedral. And this is the Bishop Palace, which is just across the street of the cathedral. A little curiosity about uh, the city center of Malaga. Malaga was, is the path of cultures. It was the entrance of the kingdom of Granada. You know, from North Africa, they were selling everything through Malaga. So Malaga has a, a big heritage in Moorish uh, heritage as well, that you can see the Arabic castle at the top called al Kasaba, And at the very bottom, what you see, it is a Roman theater because it wasn't only the entrance to the Moors when they were dominating, but it was also one of the entrances to the Iberian Peninsula from the Romans as well, 2000 years ago. Uh, this is another view from the cathedral. And as you can see, one of the towers is unfinished. So that's why we call it La Manquita, the armless. That's why we call it like that. And this is the symbol of Malaga called Cenachero. Cenachero comes from the word Cenacho, C-E-N-A-C-H-O. That is the name of those baskets that he is carrying on his arm. What was the purpose of this? This type of gentleman in the early 20th century, they used to go to the harbor of Malaga to buy some uh, fresh fish every morning, very early in the morning. And they used to go to the neighborhoods that they were not so close to the water and they used to sell their fishes. And the way to recognize when he was selling the fishes is in the distance, you could hear something like, pescado fresco, se vende al peso, fresh fish sold by the weight actually the weight it was just a handful you know it was like a half a pound okay that's a handful and there it is so that has become the symbol of malaga and this is my dear friend trinidad that she's my local guide over there in the city of granada 
loads of fun with her, I have to say. From Granada, from Malaga, sorry, we are driving north and then there will be a point that we will detour to Sevilla where we're going to stay for five nights. And as we arrive, it will be already nighttime. And there you see what we're going to see, what we're going to find, that treasure, that beauty, that jewel, which is the tower of the former big mosque that used to be in the grounds where today is the cathedral. <clears throat> Sleeping again, and then the day after we're going to get lost in the small alleys of Sevilla. We're going to admire its beautiful corners like this that we see right now, and then we're going to visit the cathedral of Sevilla, Gothic cathedral. Uh, there is a say that uh, because Sevilla was nominated the port of the Americas, Sevilla is inland like 60 miles away out of the mouth of the river in the Atlantic. So what happened? Why Sevilla inland? Okay, Sevilla was uh, navigable since the Romans, more than 2,000 years ago. It means that uh, having the last track of all the goods imported from the other side of the Atlantic to the Iberian Peninsula, the last track uh, was supposed to be safe, to have everything, all the goods in those uh, ships away from the buccaneers and corsairs that they were waiting on the Atlantic side of the Strait of Gibraltar. That's why Sevilla was the port of the Americas. Inside of the cathedral, we're going to see the magnificent uh, choir. There you see, and also the tomb of some, not all, remains of Christopher Columbus. They have been DNA'd and it is estimated that they are real those uh, uh, little uh, remains that uh, there are in that magnificent tomb inside of the Cathedral of Sevilla. This is the view, if you dare to climb the Tower of Sevilla, that you will see the entire city. But it's not the only tall structure in the historical center of Sevilla, because this other structure, which is done by a Northern European architect, is called, nicknamed by the Sevillanos, the mushrooms because of the shape of it. And it's the largest wooden structure in the whole world. And actually you can climb to the very top and this will be the view that you have from the top of that structure. And you can see the tower of the cathedral called La Giralda. Alrighty. What about going to Andalusia and not having a flamenco experience? Yes, there you are. The flamenco, there's a little show that is included. Uh, nothing touristy. It's going to be something of really authentic uh, flamenco show. Less than an hour. We don't need more than that. Uh, so after admiring that is when we are going to go back to sleep. And the following day, I'm taking you to Cadiz, the oldest city in Europe. On the way to Cadiz, we're going to visit a, a Spanish horse bred uh, farm of uh, horses. And these two that you see on the screen, uh, just for your information, both of them has the white hair, but I am the one on the left, just in case that you have any doubt about it, okay? Uh, so, <laughs> okay, jokes aside, uh, this is the beautiful view of the city of Cadiz. Look at the color of the water, the color of the sky, and the light of the city per se. Of course, this is the entrance of the city from the harbor. That's uh, what you will see immediately after we jump off the bus. The city hall at the entrance, at the, just behind is the cathedral. And we're going to wander around in the alleys, ending up in the market, where we will see how the fresh products are sold over there. And in the outside of the market, there's a good met section that you can actually have some experiences. And uh, in my essence of a South Spain tour, we're going to have some tapas experience and also some sherry wine experience. Here you have a little sample of the tapas with a glass of sangria, one of your favorites, Sarah. Look at that. I love that. That looks fantastic. Yeah. And those are, oh, by the way, you know, this, uh, the, the, the first thing that you see here, the, those are prawns and they're coated with butter and deep fried. You know how we call them? Because we have a name for everything. Uh, because they are covered with a coat. We call them uh, prawns with a raincoat. That's how we call them. 
<laughs> so it was just a matter of curiosity, okay? All righty, so this is another uh, tapa. It was halfway, I couldn't resist to try it first and then I took that photo, but it's another, meat is also very important in South Spain, not only the, uh, the fish, the fresh fish. The uh, length of uh, each day trip is estimated to be in between nine and 10 hours. Okay, so from Sevilla, we go to Cordoba. And of course, we need to see the magnificent mosque that it was reconverted into a Catholic church. In here, you see the entrance to the patio of the ablutions. And in this photo is the former tower of the mosque of Cordoba that now is, uh, is not part of the complex, it's not joined to it. Uh, and they left the patio in between, but now they had it, uh, well, not now, when the, it was reconverted into a Catholic church, it was uh, a couple of floors was added just to add the bells of the cathedral. This is a part of inside world heritage as well. By the way, uh, Spain is the third largest country in the whole world with world heritage sites. The first uh, one is uh, shared between Italy and uh, China. Second is France and Spain is the third. So this is the inside of the mosque of the cathedral and look at the, how beautiful all that hand handcraft uh, art is uh, is done inside already a curiosity about cordoba if you see a photo like the not a photo and a facade like this which is a private house and the door is open just go in don't be shy you will find the iron fence locked obviously because it's a private property but that is an invitation to go and see how the patios they look like Every year in the month of May, there is a competition of the patios of Cordoba. And I have to tell you, they take it very, very seriously, all these uh, competitions. This photo was taken in winter, so there's not many flowers. But just imagine how the flowers blooming in the month of May with the good weather, uh, how Pinterest it could look like. And this is another little corner that you can find in the old U.S. section of uh, uh, Cordoba. Uh, as I said, you know, about nine hours is more or less the day trip. And uh, our last day in Sevilla, we're visiting the Spanish pavilion for the 1929 Expo. It was made by Aníbal González, and it's absolutely glorious, wonderful, beautiful. And for those movie freaks, I have to tell you that in chapter one and two of Star Wars, several shots were done in here in this location. And this is another point of view with that uh, canal that you can row boats if you want. And uh, well, what can I say? After that, we go to the still active, active Royal Palace in Sevilla, which is called the Alcázar. And after the Alcázar, we can, on the way out, we can see these ponds. Uh, many, many chapters of those of that uh, TV show called Games of Thrones, they were shot in here. And there has been a kind of a pilgrimage from freaks from that series that they have come to Sevilla just specifically to see these locations. Look at these beautiful handcraft arches inside of the Alcázar. Okay, so just uh, after wandering again in the small alleys, the icing on the cake before our farewell dinner will be, by all means, a ride on a horse carriage. And just riding along, we're going to visit again from another different perspective, the Square of Spain. And also we're going to see on our way to the restaurant, the former lighthouse of the port of Sevilla, which is called the Golden Tower. And the reason why it's called the Golden Tower is because the uh, color of the, of the stone is sandstone. And also the last uh, portion of the tower, the very top, it used to be covered with yellow tiles. Those yellow tiles, including at the daytime, they were reflecting the sunlight all over. So the ships, they knew where to go. Besides, I have to tell you that uh, I did mention earlier that uh, Sevilla, <coughs> excuse me, Sevilla, uh, although it is 60 miles inland, is only 45 feet above the sea level. That's why the river is navigable since the Atlantic Ocean to the city. 
Let's go with exploring Catalonia, well-known treasures and hidden gems. Here you can see me in front of the Sagrada Familia. One of your things on your bucket list, uh, Sarah, there you have. And this is uh, just a couple of years old photo. And uh, I have uh, learned that uh, uh, the second tallest tower is halfway up from a colleague of mine from Barcelona, which is dedicated to Virgin Mary. Actually, you see here only four towers. In the opposite side, there's another four. And just behind my head, uh, hidden, there is another four towers. Those three groups of four towers are in total 12. They are representing the 12 apostles. Then there are gonna be four taller towers representing the four evangelists. The second, tallest tower, which is halfway through, will represent uh, Our Lady, Mary, Mother of Jesus. And the tallest of the tower, which uh, only the basement is done, uh, will represent Jesus himself. The altitude of that tower will be 187 meters, which is the altitude of the highest hill in Barcelona city limits. One of the Gaudí's things was he was extremely religious. It was that uh, he could not defeat God's work. So he wouldn't dare to go taller than something created by God himself, which is the tallest point in Barcelona, which is 187 meters. So that will be the height of the tallest tower. Sarah, have a look at this. Wow, this is, look at this that. Is what it, this is what it looks now, the inside of the... Uh, Sagrada Familia. And this is just a teasing photo. I'm not going to show more than that. You know, you need to go and see because it's absolutely beautiful. One side of the cathedral has the colors of those stained glass windows in one palette, and in the other side is another palette. Obviously, when the sun rises, it's brighter when it's uh, setting. So this is looking towards the east. And those who are facing towards the west, they are in red. So it is quite impressive to, to see that. This is a market of Barcelona, uh, one of the many markets of Barcelona, very, very modernist, uh, very uh, avant-garde, and uh, actually St. Eulalia's market. Uh, many, many traditional markets in Barcelona that they are uh, like uh, all over Spain. But uh, also this is a view from the distance, uh, from that high point I was mentioning earlier, from the mountain of Montjuic. Okay, Montjuic is a compendium, it's a word game. That means the mountains of the Jews. It used to be a Jewish cemetery over there, not any longer, but that is the name of it, Montjuic. And this photo overlooking at the Sagrada Familia from the distance is uh, where this photo was taken. Well, this is another masterpiece of Gaudí, Casa Milá. And uh, it is a must, and it's also included in my tours, the same as it was the Sagrada Familia. And uh, look at the iron work in the balconies, very, very innovative at the time. As a little curiosity, I have to tell you that uh, in this building was the very first time that uh, reinforced concrete was used in Spain when they made this, uh, this building. Really? Uh, here you have, yes, this is just across the street, three blocks down. It's another Gaudi uh, house, which is called Casa Bajo. Have a look at the balconies. Don't they look, uh, don't they remind it to you like face masks in a way? So this is uh, located in the block of the discord. Why is it called the block of the discord? Well, in that block, it was just a matter of coincidence that the three most famous architects of the city, one of them Gaudí, the other one was Pucci Calafal, and the other one was uh, Dumenech Montaner. They were working in uh, making houses for the, some of the wealthiest families the, in, in Barcelona, and they were competing with each other to see which one was the most innovative, had the most beautiful uh, house. Uh, obviously, Gaudí, I'm not saying that he won, but uh, Gaudí had a name already. But if you see the other two, they are just fantastic. Am I showing them to you here? No. You need to see them live with your own eyes. So this is another photo of the Sagrada Familia. And here, 
guess what this is? This is something from an artist that you know very well in the United States. This is the, uh, uh, the town where Salvador Dali was born. The name is Figueras, F-I-G-U-E-R-A-S. And this is a former theater that he converted it into his own museum when he was still alive with that glass sphere that you see there and all those mannequins just pointing to all places around. This is another photo from the inside. Uh, everything is surreal inside. Absolutely everything is surreal. By all means, this is included in the uh, visit of the uh, Exploring Catalonia. This amphitheater, Roman amphitheater that you see is in Tarragona. And Tarragona is also included as another day visit in my Exploring Catalonia uh, tour. Tarragona was uh, the capital of one of the three provinces that the, well, in fact, there were four provinces that the Romans had in the Iberian Peninsula. One was Lusitania, that more or less is what today is Portugal. Another one, the largest one was Hispania, that is uh, almost everything what today is Spain. Then they had Tarraco, and that's the name of the city, Tarragona, nothing to do with Tarragon, the spice, okay, the herbs. And the other one was uh, uh, Cartago from Cartagena, that's in the south uh, east of Spain. Uh, so Tarragona and the Roman sites and all the history uh, and also the Jewish heritage of the city is uh, included in one of my day visits. And this is just a view of the beautiful rose window in the Cathedral of Tarragona. All righty, let's jump to Madrid and the Imperial Cities Tour. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the impressive Royal Palace of Madrid, 2,800 rooms. If you were with me and Sarah on Tuesday, I started my live uh, broadcast just there. And uh, if you were not, just go on Sarah's uh, Facebook page and you will see the live, which is already there. And uh, I explain a little bit more, a little bit more extensive, uh, not much, but a little bit more about the history of the palace. But as I said, it's the largest palace in continental Europe. Here in Madrid is going to be exactly the same, but just based in Madrid all the time. Sleeping in Madrid, one day in Madrid, one day out of Madrid, one day in Madrid, one day out. So the Royal Palace is included, the visit in it, and we can admire all the uh, roofs that they are so impressive. Look at this beautiful quadriga in the top of a roof, downtown Madrid, only a block away from our hotel where we're staying. This is uh, an Egyptian temple that our original Egyptian temple that it is in the city of Madrid. If you want to know more about that, go onto my Facebook page, Traveling with Jorge, a little bit backwards on my timeline in early uh, summer, nine, sorry, uh, 2021. And you will see that I did a live uh, regarding the history, why this monument real monument from Egypt is here in Madrid. Okay, continuing, we're going to go through history. This is uh, Philip IV, the very first statue ever made in that position, and there is a reason and why it became to be like that, located in front of the royal palace. This photo that you see here is the uh, first big train station that Madrid had in the second half of the 1800s. The dome that you see at the very top, it was the very first canyon dome ever made in the whole world. Actually, it was a testing uh, to see if that kind of structure will hold that kind of weight. And uh, guess which one was the second made after this one when they found out that that structure would work. It was um, Victoria Station in London. That was, uh, you know, the, how they took the, the idea just to make a test in here. And originally it used to be the tracks where this botanical garden is now. And uh, just behind me when I took that photo is where the main hub of the high-speed trains in Spain is. By the way, 
you know, uh, in Spain, it's very easy to connect to wherever you want to go because of our high speed uh, network, which is the second in mileage in the whole world. The first one is China since four years ago, but before it was Spain. This is uh, another beautiful corner of my city, which is inside of the Retiro Park. And there is a huge lake in there that's uh, with those uh, beautiful monuments and statues all over. Specifically, this one is dedicated to King Alphonse the Twelfth. Also, a visit in that park is included, uh, as well as the uh, the Queen Sophia Arts Center. Um, Sarah, do you remember the Georges Pompidou Center in Paris? I do. Yes, we talked about uh, that a little bit yesterday. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You're right. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's got nothing to do with it, but the Georges Pompidou Center in, in Paris is made out of glass and uh, iron, right? So just because of these glasses and elevators that you can see, you know how we nickname the Queen Sophia Arts Center here in Madrid? Sophie Du. <laughs> that's how we call it. <laughs> 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 okay, the icon of the city, the goddess Cybeles, C-I-B-E-L-E-S, adopted from the Greek mythology, pulled by lions like a lady there sitting on the chariot, and you can perceive one of the cherubs at the back escorting her, that is the symbol of the city, and uh, here is at night a very impressive look of the uh, royal palace the entire structure uh, this is just one side okay it's, let, let's say this is the back of the royal palace and uh, this is uh, in the city of salamanca where some art deco uh, houses are in there in fact this is the house of Lis, and um, beautiful structures in there this is in segovia as well another day visit with the impressive royal palace uh, that is the cathedral of segovia which is the last of the gothic cathedrals ever built in spain and the the the, the thing that makes this uh, cathedral special is because first is late gothic and the color of the stone which is very very bright in yellow this is Toledo, the capital of empire, until Philip II moved the court city from Toledo to Madrid in 1561. Uh, the impressive cathedral of Toledo is this, um, the um, second largest in, uh, in Spain after Sevilla's. And this is the fresco in the sacristy of Toledo's cathedral. Sarah, this is some kind known to you the name of uh, uh, Luca Giordano? I do know Luca Giordano, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was the one who made this. And you know how he was nicknamed here in Spain? Well, I can tell you in uh, Italy, he was named, he was called Fast Hand Luke. <laughs> he, was, he was called Luca Fapresto. Yeah. <laughs> kind of speedy Luca, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. <laughs> he, used to paint, he used to paint with both hands. Yep. And uh, it took less than a year to do this beautiful fresco at the sacristy of, uh, of the Cathedral of Toledo. This is a, a view of Avila, which is also a visit included in my Madrid staycation. Uh, it's the uh, biggest uh, walled city. Uh, with the original walls preserved in uh, in Europe, and uh, actually is the hometown of Santa Teresa of Jesus. For those who uh, you know is looking for a little bit of a, um, mm, let's say a church uh, touch in it, it's going to be church touches all over because we're in many cathedrals and many places. But this is kind of touching, you know, just visiting Avila. And uh, here we have Salamanca, the third oldest university in Spain from the late 1200s. Uh, this is the facade of the university per se. This is also the city hall, which is located in the main square of Salamanca, uh, declared one of the most beautiful main squares all over Europe. And ladies and gentlemen, that is my logo that you can find in any social media. You know, this is the name of my uh, website. And 
Uh, this is uh, from the Chamber of Commerce that I got that when all this COVID situation started and I had to pass some tests. So I'm here just uh, making sure that, uh, you know, you are uh, going with uh, something responsible and some people responsible and taking care of all the things. So in Facebook, that's how I am traveling with Jorge. In Instagram, traveling with Jorge all together. And in Twitter, there's a slight difference. Traveling W Jorge. So that's how you can get hold of me. Sarah. Fantastic. I, I think I have just said more than enough. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. Well, we really appreciate you uh, showing up today, Jorge, and, and giving us a little tour around uh, Spain because for sure, that is on my list and it should be on everybody's list, especially I think one of the reasons that Spain is such an intriguing destination is that Spain really made a big impact on our, our country in the United States. It had a big impact on South America. It had a big impact on other European countries. So I think what if you're trying to put together the puzzle of how to understand history, it's really important, don't you think? I do. And uh, if we talk about history, I mean, history regarding decade is nothing. Uh, if you think that uh, not so long ago, it was just a couple of hundred years ago, all the southern states of the United States were vice kingdom or kingdoms of the crown of Spain together with Central America and the entire South America with the exception of Brazil. Uh, you know, it is is what you're saying. It made a huge impact. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, learning about Spain is really learning about ourselves in the sense that it really had a big effect on our culture. So, and well, I understand also, and this is a disclaimer, uh, I also understand that, uh, you know, history is all, always written in both sides from the loser and from the winner. I am Spaniard, I can't help it, and I love my country. Uh, but I do recognize that uh, we, we, when I say we, means the country itself in the past. We did things that they were not correct. We have the Spanish Inquisition. We have, you know, all that gold and silver that you can admire today in cathedrals and national heritage. But how much blood is behind all that? Yeah. You see, I understand all that. And I cannot, I cannot even apologize for that because things happened when it happened. And it, there was a purpose. No one is guilty about it. But... Uh, at least we have the heritage and the history which is there and uh, the all the only thing i think that we should do nowadays is just to embrace the things the way they are don't you think sarah i think it's important to not be judgmental and to have an open mind and learn about things and then you can you can make your own decision once you learn fully about everything true why things were the way they were. It's, it's complex, you know, it's, it's not enough to say, oh, the Spanish, in, Spanish Inquisition was bad. Well, let's talk about what were the origins of that? What motivated that, your, Spain to, to create something that mm -hmm. terrible? There was a motivation, there was a reason that they did that. So I think it's really important through history, things that we quickly judge to go back and re-examine them and just understand where does that come from? Why do, why do people behave the way they do? There's a reason, right? Yeah, there's always a reason behind every act. That's right. Yeah. 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 And understanding, and as they always say, if you understand history, you can foretell your future. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> By the way, now that you're mentioning that, we are, uh, you know, our colleague Francisco and I, we are doing the a podcast called Spanish Loops, yes. and we are touching loads of those themes, you know. So uh, it's just just uh, Google Spanish Loops in uh, any of your favorite platform. And it's going to be very interesting. So very interesting because we're talking about those things. And sometimes when Fran and I uh, discuss beforehand what we want to talk about, don't you think that's going to be like a bit controversial? Okay, let's try to be a little bit, you know, from an outsider, like if we know nothing about it. So uh, I think it's coming out really well. So that, oh, will help, that will help our audience here to understand a little bit of everything because we are touching so many topics in here. And we invite you one day to participate if you wish. 
I would love to be on your podcast. That would be really fun. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So I'm Thank so you. proud of you guys for all the hard work you've been doing to try and share your love of Spain, um, either through Guide Collective, through your own websites, through your podcast. It's just really impressive what you've put together. So Thanks. your passion for, uh, for Spain is obvious. So I really appreciate you, Jorge. I, I thank you for all the kind things you said about me, but I really appreciate you. You were one of the first members of Guide Collective to jump in and throw yourself yeah. into learning and, and being passionate about that project. So I really do appreciate you. And I hope everybody out there, uh, if you hadn't met Jorge yet, I hope you've enjoyed spending the week with him and you can absolutely follow him on all of his platforms, plus follow his new podcast. That's been on for what, about a month now, month and a half, you and Fran? Actually, doing two months and a half. Uh, next wow. week is going to be chapter 10. Yeah. Chapter 10. Yeah. So you can go to Spotify. You can go to uh, Apple, Apple Podcasts. Podcast. Anchor, any of the podcast platforms. If you're going out for your morning walk, you can catch uh, our, my friends Jorge and uh, Fran discussing Spanish culture. And I think that's a really nice way to at least have your travel dreams reignited as we start to dust off our suitcases. So sure. thanks so much for this lovely week in Spain, Jorge. It has been a delay. And I do promise you before this year is up, I will come to Spain. That is a promise. You said it out live here, so we I I have a lot of witnesses here. <laughs> I there are fifty thousand witnesses now. I will before the end of the year is up. I will come to Spain and visit you. And but you have to uh, take me out for the best sangria. You have to take me out for the best churros and chocolate. And I think I might want to try Morcilla again. I had that when I was young and thought it was really? terrible. I'm ready wow. to try it again. <laughs> Perfect. I'll take you to the right place. Very yeah, good. That's a, that's All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Spain. Um, and we'll have a little bit more information from Jorge coming up on my Facebook page this week. Uh, you can also find some of these broadcasts on my YouTube channel. I'm downloading them and posting them there. You can rewatch them at a later time. Uh, and then next week, we're going to be joined by my one of my best friends, Trish Feaster, who is going to be presenting Paris. So we're going to take a little vacation to Paris next week. So thanks oh. for a great week, Jorge. Gracias. Thank you, Sara. My pleasure. You are welcome. And as we say in Spanish, de nada. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.